I would classify us as very dangerous right now. There's no fear. We're good. This is the best Vermont team ever. No moral victories. We packed for four days. It's pulled up. I knew it was down. Like, right when I let it go. I, I had one more in me. He throws it the length of the floor. Top of that catches it. And Vermont wins. The Catamounts knock off fourth seed at Syracuse. It's just a wonderful win for our program. Biggest win in the history of the school. We'll echo that. Earlier this month, the Burlington Free Press called that moment arguably the greatest win in Vermont sports history. Never mind the Catamounts. Little Vermont 60. Mighty Syracuse 57 10 years ago tonight in the first round of the NCAA tournament. That season, the Catamounts had a coach who was in his last year on the job and got the last of his 274 career wins in the most dramatic of fashions. What a story. It is indeed what March Madness is all about. And on the 10th anniversary of that magical moment in Worcester, Massachusetts, we welcome in the man who helped engineer it, former Vermont head coach Tom Brennan into Sports Center. Coach, first things first, I remember watching that game. You openly cried, wept after the game. Take me back 10 years, put yourself in the moment, and tell me what that was like. Well, the thing is, when I had gotten my head kicked in for, for a long time here, you know, building the program and trying to get better incrementally, which we did. And uh, that night was just the culmination. Uh, we, we had a, a veteran team. We had been to two previous NCAA tournaments back to back. And this one, uh, I knew we were ready. I knew we were real good. I just didn't know how good. Uh, but it was just so emotional. It meant so much for the people of Vermont. It meant so much for the university. Uh, and I'm a crier anyway and a hugger. So <laughs> that pretty much would, would tend to follow. Now you were planning to walk away at the end of the season, win or lose. How much did that one win, the last win you had as Vermont's head coach, change everything for you and the way the program was perceived to this day? My whole life was changed, my whole life. And it was funny because I got to come to ESPN right. and I was so overmatched, I was so scared, I was so bad. And, <laughs> and I remember uh, Neil Everett saying, Neil Everett, every time I'd walk in, he'd say, Soren team made a shot, and Brennan got a job. And it used to, <laughs> used to crack me up because it was so, so truthful, you know? So uh, once that went down, once that shot went down and we ended up hanging on, yeah. uh, everything changed. Uh, I'm, I'm with you tonight, 10 years later. Uh, and there isn't a day that goes by, honest to goodness, where somebody doesn't bring it up or, or we're not connected to it somehow. It's amazing. You mentioned it, TJ Sorrentino. I remember after the game, they said he took that shot from the parking lot that went in and catapulted. <laughs> the Catamounts. Um, you called your team in this great story in the Burlington Free Press. I encourage any of our viewers to check it out if they want to know more about this team and that game and what it all meant. You said in that story that that Vermont team will go down as the basketball version of the Beatles in the state of Vermont. What do you mean by that? Well, it, it just became so big because we hadn't had a whole lot of success up until the time when those guys got there. And then we got, kept getting better and better and better. And like anything, when it's new, you know, it was the first time uh, in 2003 that we'd gone to the tournament. And, and these guys became like rock stars. I mean, and people just followed them around. And, and then by the time we got to the, the end when we were playing Syracuse, uh, they, were, they, were, they were bigger than life. I mean, people just loved them. And their kids, you know, they come into a pregame meal. Guy said, I just wanted to watch you. I just want to see Copperrath. That's all. I, just, I said, well, sit down, pull up a chair. We'd, we'd love to, you know, eat with you. But <laughs> it was it, it's such a small place. You know, that's the biggest thing. And, and everybody was involved. And we were able to give something to the whole state. And people loved it and appreciated it. And they loved those kids because of it. Before I let you go, I got to ask you this. Take me inside the locker room. What did you tell your kids after that game? Syracuse was looking to go to its second Final Four in three years. You upset the apple cart there. You played Michigan State in the next game. But after that win, when you won and stunned the basketball world, when you gathered Sorrentin, Coppenrath, all those guys in the locker room, what did you say to them? Well, I just told them uh, how proud I was of them. And that, of course, was between crying and hugs. <laughs> but I just told them how much they meant to everybody in the state of Vermont and to the people at the university. And I was so proud of them. And I was so proud to be going out with them, whenever that would be, whether it would be Sunday or a week later or two weeks later, it didn't matter. But I, I just loved those guys so much for what they'd gone through and how they uh, represented themselves and, re and represented the university and the state. And uh, it just never went away. And they were, they, were, they were big. And it was really neat. It was awesome. You were a crier, and the state had a huge smile on its face. I don't think it's been wiped off a decade later. If you want more of Coach Brennan's analysis, if you're not named Neil Everett, you can listen to him on Sirius Radio Channel 91 throughout the tournament. Coach, thanks for a great trip down memory lane. Loved it.
Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Call anytime. The great Tom Brennan. That was awesome. Back to the NBA.